Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about the front and back functional lines in the human gait cycle. So we're going to talk about walking. And then at the end of the video, um, I will relate this quiz that you see on your screen to uh, yoga poses that you can do and how to link yoga poses together using the front and back functional lines. So read the quiz, pause the video, and we will get to the answer in a moment. Real quick, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, share this video with your anatomy loving friends, and stick around to the end because as usual, I will be giving you some advice on how to use this anatomy knowledge to make your yoga classes better and more Fun. Let's get to it. Okay, let's start with the quiz. So which three of these muscles work as a unit to bring the left shoulder and right knee forward? Pause the video if you still need some time to think. All right, so we've got to pick three of the following options. Let's start at the top. Notice that we have right, 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 left, left. So I want you to make sure that you're paying attention to the side because some of these muscles would be correct answers if they were on the other side. They're, that's why they're there to distract you. You gotta know what the internal oblique does um, and the external oblique does because they do opposite things uh, depending on the side that they're on, right? So. Alrighty, starting from glute max. Well, the right glute max is right here and it would bring the knee back. So uh, we're trying to see which uh, things are gonna bring the right knee forward. Well, if the right glute max brings the knee back, then uh, no, it can't be glute max. It's a hip extender. So not the glute max. Next, right adductors. Well, the adductors are in the inside of the thigh, so they would be under they would be on this thigh, but on the inside of the thigh, and they would bring the knee kind of in towards the midline and they would help to flex the knee a little bit. So, is that look forward to you? Uh, looks pretty forward to me, and it helps to bring the knee in uh, towards the midline. So that, I would say, is a correct answer. So let's uh, make that a little smaller. So here's one correct answer. The right external oblique. So the right external oblique would be right here. And let's zoom in here. So do, 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 do. again, right external oblique is going to go like this. And the right external oblique, uh, so the same side external oblique brings the same side shoulder forward. So it would bring the right shoulder forward. Is that the shoulder we're looking for? No, we're looking for the left shoulder. So the, the right external oblique is uh, not a correct answer. The left external oblique would be a correct answer. Okay, left internal oblique. Is this a correct answer? Well, the left internal oblique would be on the left side, except for it's going to be, well, you can't see it, but it would be right here, basically. Um, and the left internal oblique, again, would bring this shoulder towards the left hip. It would bring the left hip and the right shoulder towards each other. So again, so we didn't have, it was not the external oblique and the internal oblique on the left, again, creates um, left rotation of the shoulders of the trunk. So again, obliques are a really obvious answer because obliques create a twisting motion in your uh, upper body. So these were meant to fool you because you got to pay attention to the right and your lefts. Okay, next one, uh, left pec major. Well, the left pec major definitely uh, moves the left arm and the left pec major is part of the front functional line. So on the left side, the left pec major would uh, bring the left shoulder forward. So what are we looking for? Bring the left shoulder forward. So yes, that is a correct answer. And rectus abdominis is part of the front functional line and the rectus abdominis connects the adductors and the pec major as part of the front functional line. If you don't know what the front functional line is uh, or the back functional line, that's gonna be important. I've already made videos on those 
two items. So please review those videos. Uh, they're the most recent videos that I've made. Um, let's do a quick anatomy review before we dive deeper. Okay, again, this is going to be a quick anatomy review. If you want a better uh, detailed explanation of the front and back functional lines, please see my recent videos. So front functional line, uh, in this case, we're talking about the left pec major, the rectus abdominis, and the adductor longus. In reality, there are more muscles that help this movement, but in Tom Meyer's Anatomy Train's book, he, uh, and in his cadaveric dissections, the uh, dissection that they did on the front functional line had a continuous fascial plane from the, the pec to the rectus abdominis to the adductor longus. So we're ignoring the other adductors, even though they, even though they are absolutely part of this kinetic chain, and we are ignoring the obliques, even though they are absolutely part of this kinetic chain. So um, basically what the front functional line does as a reminder is that um, it's a diagonal line here across the body and it acts to create sort of a, a rotation and flexion type movement. So it brings this shoulder and this knee towards each other. Okay, so it brings the left shoulder forward and the right knee forward, but they also come in towards the midline. So is there, there's a, front, a forward and back kind of motion. Well, really, it's a forward motion there. And it uh, and there's also a, a twisting motion. It's like a ringing out motion as well. Um, it's important to note that in the gait cycle, we have this, uh, this movement where as the, in this case, the left side, the left arm and the right knee move forward, as a result of those moving forward, the opposite side, the right shoulder and the left knee are going to move backwards. So as the, as, as the <laughs> left arm and right knee move forward, while you're walking or running. The opposite side arm and leg move backwards, and that is accomplished by the back functional line, okay? So again, in this case, and in the original quiz, in the gait cycle, we are looking at the uh, left arm, right knee moving forward. At the same time, we have the back functional line, and the back functional line between the lats the thoracolumbar uh, fascia and the gluteus maximus muscle wrapping around to the vastus lateralis muscle is, is exactly the equivalent of the front functional line except for it's on the back. So just as you'd expect, it's going to bring this shoulder and this knee towards each other. So in this case, it happens to be the left, sorry, uh, the left knee and the right shoulder moving backwards. Remember, at the same time, the front functional line was bringing this shoulder and this knee forward. So that's perfect because it creates this great uh, twisting and wrapping motion across the body. And then what's gonna happen is then the opposite sides. So right now we're looking at the back functional line that goes from this shoulder and then across the body this way. But the next time that you take a step, you take a step with the opposite leg, and then there's gonna be another lat that's gonna connect here and then down the body. And then you're gonna have your glutes on the opposite side and the vastus lateralis over here. And then that side back functional line is going to bring the other side shoulder and the other leg back. And then it just trades off one side at a time, okay? So um, the slings across the body that form an X across the body just take turns creating a twisting motion. So this is important because it's, even though when we're walking, it looks like our arms are swinging forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Really what's happening is it's a rotation, 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 rotation. It's a rotation and lateral flexion really, because this is going to bring, you know, a shoulder down as well, right? So you're going to rotate and laterally flex, rotate and side bend, okay? From side to side, I'm being dramatic, but that's how we walk. Um, it's not a really linear motion. 
Okay, so now let's return to uh, the uh, the quiz and look at more at the gate cycle. Okay, quick reminder, in the original quiz, we were looking at the um, left shoulder, right knee move forward, and that is create that is an action that is created by the front functional line that goes from the left pec to the rectus abdominis to the right adductor longus, okay? And that brings the left shoulder and right knee forward. And at the same time, the back functional line from the right shoulder, the latissimus dorsi, to the thoracolumbar fascia, to the left glutes, bring the left leg back and the left shoulder back. Okay, so you can see that there is a wrapping of these on the back side, uh, that uh, functional line, and then on the front side, this functional line. And then they're going to trade off the next time this person takes a step. Okay, let's look a little closer. Okay, here is uh, looking at the same exact position. We've freeze framed this person in the middle of running. We're looking at them from the back and from the front. Okay, so from the front, we can see the front functional line bringing this shoulder forward and this knee forward. And it's doing so because this pec is contracting and then the abdominals are contracting and they're pulling on this adductor longus. Okay, and so it's pulling this side together. At the same time, the back functional line on the left shoulder down to the left knee are bringing the opposite arm and leg back, okay? So the front functional line, the front functional line moves the arms and legs forward and the back functional line moves the opposite side, the back functional line, moves the opposite side, um, arm and leg backwards, okay? So it does that by drawing this latissimus dorsi right here and through the um, fascia to the glute max and then around to the um, uh, vastus lateralis, okay? So it's bringing this side in, okay? And they're gonna trade off. Now let's look at it from another angle. Okay, same thing. Again, this is exactly the same position. We're just looking at it from two different angles, okay? The same side, and in, in all of these um, images, the left arm is forward and the right leg is forward, okay? So we're dealing with the same exact set of muscles. So we're gonna draw the front functional line onto this person. So we're gonna see it come around here, down through the um, uh, rectus abdominis, and then you can't see it, but it would be going into the leg. And then if we were to look at it from the other side of this person, we would see that it's going to, here's the, you know, in here is gonna be your adductors, and then it's gonna go up through your rectus abdominis, and then into this pec, okay? So this line is going to draw the arm forward, the arm forward, and the knee forward, okay? Knee forward. Meanwhile, the back functional line, let's draw that. So the back functional line, is from here, um, drawing the shoulder back, and it's going to go down through the lat, and then through the uh, left gluteus maximus, and then under the IT band, and then down into the vastus lateralis, and it's drawing that leg back. If we draw it on the other model, we're gonna see the right shoulder moving backwards, as the latissimus dorsi pulls on it, and then going to wrap around the left butt cheek and uh, around the back of the left leg and draw the left leg back, okay? So every time you take a step, it's gonna trade. So instead of seeing the front functional line on the, uh, 
from the left shoulder to the right knee, pull the left shoulder and the right knee forward. Then the front functional line on the other side from the right shoulder to the left knee is gonna work and it's gonna fire and twist and rotate. So in the gait cycle, when you're looking at the front and the back functional lines, they trade off to create, because they're balanced, you know, they balance each other out. So it looks like you're creating a forward, you know, and back type of motion, forward and back, forward and back, forward, but you're not. It's really, it's a ringing out this way and then a ringing out the other way and then a ringing out this way with some side bending and some side bending and some twisting, right? So the, the balanced sort of twisting motion is what creates a forward um, what propels you forward. So it's really kind of cool that we use rotation to propel us forward. I just think that's, I don't know, it, the geek in me loves that. Now, uh, let's apply this to our yoga practice. Okay. Um, forgive this anatomy model here. Um, I know he looks a little distorted. These uh, uh, models are hard to work with. Anyway, the point I want to make about yoga and um, transitioning from one pose to the, to the next and, and sequencing in yoga here is that if you understand the gait cycle and how we trade off from side to side using the front and back functional lines and they just take turns, then why not sequence like that? Why not sequence from one pose using one set of um, front and back functional lines and then use the opposite set of front and back functional lines in the next pose so that we condition ourselves to move in the same way that we would move in a gait cycle, which is a very natural human movement. So um, the simple way of saying that is why not just move from a twist on one side to a twist on the other side? That'll accomplish what I just said. So in this case, we might move, for example, from a, um, uh, a twisted lunge here to a standing um, Paravritta Uttita Asta Parangustasana. <laughs> it's been a while since I said the Sanskrit names. Anyway, uh, why not move from this pose to this pose and maybe back and forth between them in a sort of dynamic way if you wanted to with one breath, one movement, just an option. You could do it however you want though. Because if you look at this, then the uh, back functional line here is firing, you know, uh, and then into this leg, uh, or is getting stretched out, and then the same side, um, then it starts working as it pulls the, uh, the shoulder back when you move into this version of the pose, right? And then you have to use it for stability here. And then the front functional line is doing the opposite thing, right? It's, um, in this case, it's pulling this shoulder forward and twisting you and lifting this leg up and forward, and then um, in pose A, it gets stretched out, right? As you pull this arm back and you open it up and it's coming across here, so you're opening up this uh, front functional line. So if you oscillate between the two poses or you just sequence it so that you got one and then the other, and there are a million ways that you can do this, but basically just twist one way and then twist the next way and you're, uh, you're switching back and forth between the, the front functional line and uh, on one side and the other. Right, and the back functional line on one side and then the other. Why does this matter? Because it mimics the gait cycle. Why does that matter? Because the most natural thing that a human being does that we do better than any other species on the planet is walk. That's what we do best. Birds fly, fish swim, we walk. That's what we do. We do it better than any other animal on the planet long distance anyway. So, and the way that we walk is important and it's really like ingrained in our brains and our, our muscle patterns and our muscle shape and our bone shape and all that stuff. So taking advantage of that in a yoga class seems like a good idea to me. Uh, if nothing else, then it's fun because you it's this is a challenge to move from one pose to the other. Um, it's a challenge to move more dynamically too. So if you do this again with one breath, one movement, or if you really wanted to do it, this is going to feel less like a yoga pose. But uh, if you did it where you switch from one to the other quickly, like breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, right? So that would be a quick kind of dynamic movement. Um, but it's kind of fun and it's a tricky balance sort of situation. So I hope that helps. Um, comment if you've got questions. Uh, again, like this video, share it with your friends, and I'll see you in the next episode.